Thank you. Hello, everybody, and thank you for these last days we spent together. I have decided to write this statement, as I rarely do, because I feel the importance of the situation requires it. President Arger asked that we pay attention to what survivors need. Thank you, President Arger, for, for your worthy focus. I will talk here about the failure to identify prostitution as, in, as a, an inherently exploitative system and about how we can turn that failure into success. I speak here for the survivors of Space International. Let me remind you that Space stands for Survivors of Prostitution Abuse Calling for Enlightenment and that we call for enlightenment because we know that until the world recognizes prostitution for the abuse that it is, nothing will ever change. Our representatives have lived the global sex trade in nine nations across four continents. Some of us identify as having been prostituted and others as sex trafficked. But we all agree that what we need is social and political recognition of the system of exploitation within which we were abused. By political recognition, I do not only mean laws passed in the parliaments of the world. I mean the broad scale political understanding of prostitution as a system of inherent exploitation. This understanding will not be recognized socially until it has been recognized politically. Let me be clear that we flatly refuse the notion that we do not need social and political recognition of the abusive nature of prostitution. We do need it. We know we need it. We need it for a multitude of reasons, including our emotional, psychological, and spiritual health. All exploited peoples need recognition of the shape and nature of their exploitation. It is not some luxurious add-on but rather a necessary step towards healing. It is also a necessary step towards ensuring no further people need to be healed. Let us be honest about the tensions that have bubbled up among some of us here these last days. It is the only way that we can try to meet each other in respectful efforts to resolve them. Let me make my own contribution to resolving those disagreements. Last night, when I returned to my room, I found I could not sleep. Having time to think, I found myself turning over in my mind why it is that I'm so sure that the attitude, we must not create a hierarchy of victims, comes from a well-intentioned place. I was certain instinctually that this sentiment was properly held, but I hadn't defined for myself why. I think I have arrived at the understanding. Here is what I believe is happening. People who worry about creating a hierarchy of victims are concerned about the obvious fact that if we conceive of victimhood as if it were a totem pole, some people will naturally find themselves on the bottom. Some people will get the message that their pain and harm is of less value or importance. This is the message no decent person wants to bring, and it is certainly not the message I have come here to express. I do not want us to conceive of victimization as a totem pole. That is both simplistic and inappropriate. I want us rather to recognize the reality that exploitation is multifaceted, and some elements of its shape and nature alter across systems. The fact is that some people are trafficked within legitimate economic systems, and it is the force involved that defines their exploitation and the denial of the rights common to those legitimate systems. And other people are exploited within illegitimate systems that are exploited in and of their nature excuse me, that are exploitative, rather, in and of their nature, where there are and can be no rights. For these people, there is an additional layer of trauma involved. This does not lessen the trauma of the former group. It simply means that there is an additional layer of trauma for the latter, 
and that trauma must be recognized, and so must the system that created it. We must recognize this. We cannot change what we don't acknowledge. And this brings me back to the point of dissent that I felt within myself yesterday and sensed elsewhere in the room. Forced labor does not include prostitution because prostitution is not labor. Not every way that we are remunerated is worthy of being dignified with the terms work and labor. The truth is that prostitution is the commercialization of sexual abuse. The terms sex work and sexual services do not describe what happens in prostitution. Prostitution cannot be properly defined by the terms labor or work. To our friends in the anti-trafficking community, I would say we the survivors of prostitution abuse appeal to you to stop using terms like work to define this system of exploitation. Terms like service to define each instance of abuse and terms like consent to define our reluctant submission. I must also say as long as we have powerful organizations such as human rights organizations and global anti-trafficking networks referring to the abuse of prostitution as work and labor, as long as we have this, we will never have the social and political recognition of prostitution as a form of abuse. We see one remedy for the form of exploitation we have suffered. It is commonly known as the Nordic model. It involves the decriminalization of the exploited, the criminalization of the pimps who sold us, and the Johns who bought us, and the opening up of real viable exit strategies. Space International has two recommendations for our closing document. That there be formal recognition of the additional layer of trauma suffered by those who've been trafficked into abusive trades, such as prostitution, which are not legitimate industries, but rather systems which are exploitative by their nature. And secondly, but perhaps more importantly, a request that I ask you, Monsignor Sarando, to carry to Pope Francis himself, that the principles of the Nordic model be implemented here in the Vatican City. The Vatican is its own state with its own right to implement its own laws. And we believe that the Nordic model adopted here would send a clarion call across the world, not only a hopeful call, but a global demand, an international insistence on the respect and dignity of the human person. Thank you.